Quel en est le titre Portrait de la jeune fille en feu. So, Kelly, we saw Portrait of a Lady on Fire, mm -hmm. and now we're going to talk about it. So, <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, well, I will say, I thought this was such a refreshingly different film. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it, um, I think we don't see a lot of movies that are purely about women and very, yeah. like, you could see the impacts of men in their lives, but men minus a guy who was schlepping a bag for her at one point. Right. Um, but also, he's he's only there for a few seconds. Oh, like there, I seconds. think yeah. I think there were two men seen for like two yeah. seconds and not at all in the same way that women are seen right. in the movie. Right, right, and, and really almost props, like, yeah, exactly. honestly. Um, and so it was just profoundly about these women's world back then, and I think I think it was very representative of, I mean, it's supposed to be 1790s France, these women who are at least in the genteel class, if not nobility, mm -hmm. and um, I think they would have been very alone and isolated in a lot of ways. Um, and so I just thought it was, it was neat to see these women in this purely female, feminine world, and I think right. it was so beautifully shown shown of like how women interact with women when there's when it's there's just, no yeah men when there's no men around yeah. um, and so like I mean I thought the love story was beautiful and everything but I thought beyond that um, you know we see a woman a woman getting menstrual cramps and <laughs> we're going to take care of that yeah. and like um, and you know, discussions of unwanted pregnancies and mm -hmm. what women had to do back then when there was an unwanted pregnancy. And so you, you certainly see the consequences of men in their lives with the unwanted pregnancy. The whole plot is driven around this woman exactly. who has to marry and she doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought it was so striking. There's one line that um, Heloise, the woman who's being forced into this marriage, she sa says to the other woman, what do you know about my marriage? And she says, I don't know anything. And she said, yeah, neither do I. And that's what's terrifying. Right. Um, and so it was, I don't know, it was just such an interesting, intimate look into women's lives at that time and their fears and their vulnerabilities, but also their strength and, mm -hmm. and just what you see these women go through through the course of the movie was heartbreaking in, yeah. in really real ways and in ways that we can still really relate to. Um, I mean, I just, I loved the scene where the woman got her period and like was like, oh, cramps. And I was just like, I've never seen that in a movie. That's amazing. Right. Um, and almost the, <laughs> the subtlety of the way that it happens too. Mm -hmm. like, like you're paying attention. You're like, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. But they never say it out loud. Yeah. And then, you know, somebody gives her some stone, like hot stones yeah, to put on there. And there. she's, she kind of vaguely mentions that she hasn't had her period in a few months. Or like, yeah, she doesn't even character. say the word yeah. period. She mm -hmm. just, she's just like, yeah, I haven't needed those, to use those in a few months. And she's uh -huh. like, oh, do you want it? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's very subtle the way that they it's talk about everything. Subtle. It's very subtle, but I think it's so... Correct. I mean, I feel like the movie was made for women, and it was just kind of like men come along right. if you want to. But like, this is this is about women. This is for women. This is we're going to use our own words and our own experiences. Cinematic language. Yeah, too. yeah. It was just it was so beautiful. And so I think from from that point of view, I've just I've never seen a movie like that. And it so I think something. Really you touched on kind of uh, the plot, but I think something that's really striking about it is that it's about a woman who's going to go to paint another woman in order for that woman's future husband to decide that he wants to marry her <laughs> as, as kind of this exchange thing. And the the device of it is that the woman who's being painted does not want to be painted and she doesn't want to be basically turned into an object. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because that is often how the gaze is used. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's in a way that the woman is objectified. And in this movie, it's ripping that off in such a yeah. very different way and saying, 
we're gonna gaze. We're gonna gaze the whole time, and these two are gonna be gazing at each other, but we're gonna get rid of the power dynamics that are involved in people gazing at one another that we see often in other yeah. movies. And that's one of the things that I thought was really powerful and that I've thought a lot about in this film was taking that power back. And um, there's actually a very striking scene where, you know, the Hello is the woman being painted is looking at the woman painting her and is like, she, she's going, look at me, look at me. Right. And like commanding her gaze and taking control of it, really. Um, and I just thought... Yeah, and something that happens between the two of them is that, you know, while one of them is a painter and necessarily needs to kind of uh, turn the other into an object, she... There's a scene where she actually mentions all these things that she's noticed mm -hmm. about her as a person mm -hmm. because of this constant looking at yeah. each other. Yeah. And then it's returned yes. at the same time, which is, I thought that yeah. was a really interesting it scene. It was really subverting the power dynamic in the gaze, which I thought was, I mean, it was subtle, but also explicit and really powerfully done and very powerfully subverted. Um, and I think because there were no men involved, it was these two women. And, you know, there, there was kind of a power dynamic. The woman being painted was obviously in a higher social class than the other woman. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was really complicated. And, and even the woman doing the painting, was you could see her conflict of, I have to turn this other person, this other woman, into an object, and right. it's not fair. And, and it's interesting because it actually starts with the painter being painted by her students. Mm -hmm. So it's almost this like, you know, you start, you go into this world by watching other people turn her into an object and then she in turn has to turn somebody yeah. else. It's just, you know, yeah. a lot of this, this messing with the way that, that, that painting and gaze and, and, and objectifying yeah. works. But in the same way, making it powerful, making the portrait powerful, because yeah. she does that first portrait of the woman where she feels very objectified and then she undoes it. Yeah. And she then makes wipes it away. <laughs> makes it and like and and they comment that, oh, that other one is so much more lifelike and so and she's like, Yeah, because I've learned more about you. And I thought that was very striking at the end with her student because her student hands her back a portrait and she said, oh, you've made me look sad. And she said, but you were, you were sad yeah. when I was painting you. And, and bringing that, like, but you're not an object. I brought your feelings into this. Mm -hmm. um, I just, yeah, it was just so neat and so subtly done. But I feel like it was one of those films that I watched, and I just took it in. And it was beautiful, and it was well made, and yeah. the acting was poignant. And it was just, when I was watching it, it was really just, I was taking in a beautiful film right and then right. afterwards was when all of this other stuff just has been hitting me in waves yeah. um, which I that's to me that's the sign of a remarkable film as when it just hangs in your brain and picks at your brain for weeks yeah, you know um, that's like the, those are the films that I like best and so I think this one really I don't know this one I'm still I feel like it's it's been almost a week since we've yeah, seen it and I'm churning. still chewing on it um, yeah yeah so speaking of the beauty of it also um, the cinematography in this movie is fantastic and I thought something that was so striking was that every single frame is something that you can imagine being painted and, yeah. and having up in your living room or in a museum or something like that you know, depending on your wealth level. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, and I, I think my favorite shot, I mean, it's, it's still living with me, is there's just a shot of like a wheat field and then all of the women stand up out of the wheat. And both when they're down and when they're up, it's just, it's a beautiful, they're both beautiful images. And, right. and they're almost like, here's without people, here's with people. <laughs> It's yeah. just and it's and it's beautiful. interesting because it's kind of a gray landscape, kind of not like mm -hmm. the most beautiful place you've ever seen. Um, it's got a beach, but you know, yeah. it's it's still it's kind of it's not somewhere you would imagine taking the the most beautiful images from. Mm -hmm. And also, even their 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 clothes are very plain, mm -hmm. and there's just not a lot of like pomp to it. But it's just so well framed and and done to the point yeah. where you could still even though there's no it's not trying to be yeah. beautiful it is or yeah. it is trying to yeah. be beautiful but yeah. 
the the landscape and the outfits seem so muted and yet it's yeah. it's beautiful in the context. Yeah, I mean, I think if you enjoyed the cinematography of 1917 mm. in some very similar ways, this is is equally beautiful and mm -hmm. equally well done. Um, the thing that really struck me was, unlike so many films, there was no background music. Right. It was silent. All diegetic. <laughs> um, and I thought, other than a couple times where music was On what screen. was happening, yes. you know, like mm -hmm. women singing or going to an opera, like that kind of thing, or the symphony, rather. Um, and I thought that was so striking, too, because I think it let you take in the movie. Because I feel like so often background music, I mean, that's what background music is for, right? It's like, da -da -da -da, we're adding tension, we're yeah. adding and a climax, and like all of that kind of stuff. I mean, that's what background music is there for, right. um, is to tell you what how to, to think and yeah. how to feel um, and to heighten the emotion. Mm -hmm. And I thought, one, that it was such an incredibly emotive film without any yes. of that was, I mean, a credit to the filmmaking and the acting. I mm -hmm. mean, that just blew me away. Um, but also, I think just as it's trying to remove the gaze and question the gaze, yes. it's not trying to lead your emotions. It's just saying, say, like, yeah. this is what's happening. This is what women's lives were like. Like, just take it in and feel what you want to feel about that. And so I think there were times when there were things that, like, it was a really poignant moment, but I was angry. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like, and I think sweet music would have told me not to feel that. Right. But I just loved that this film was saying, like, Feel, feel what you, what you feel, feel. Yeah. And, and, and it's all valid and it's all okay and we're not going to tell you what to feel. And I right. just thought that was incredible. even the circumstances in the movie don't tell you what to feel in any way. Mm -hmm. Like every everything that like there's maybe even political discussions about and, and people have strong opinions about, none of those had any leading messages mm -hmm. or anything like that. It was all, it was all, here it is, and you will feel what you feel, and it's not on, it's not on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that was incredible because it let you feel really devastated or ha happy or whatever you're going to feel in yeah. a reaction to that. I mean, for me, like I said, when the woman got cramps and was taking care of it, I was like, that is relatable. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, like, it was just really, um, I just thought it was so poignant that it was, yeah, I mean, there were some really hard scenes, and and I think that it let you feel sad or mad or whatever you're gonna feel about it, and and let it let it flow. I mean, that's right. what I loved about it was it yeah. just let it flow, and then the final scene, of course, just to me that was it was the culmination of just like you, we've just let you feel all these emotions, and it's been up and down and a roller coaster, and then just let it out yeah. at the end, and yeah. I just thought that was. I just, I thought it was brilliant. I think it also kind of did the same thing with fire, mm -hmm. which I, th there's, you know, of course there's this motif of fire. It's called Portrait of a Lady on Fire. <laughs> you know that from the yeah. very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really interesting because oftentimes in different movies, like fire can be a destructive force or it has mm -hmm. some kind of specific theme behind it. Like, like it's a life bringing or, you know, one of the two. But in this film, it's just it's just a useful thing for them. It's just like it shows up all the time. It's something that's there. It can be destructive. It can also just be helpful. It you know it yeah. has no essential property. Yeah, and I think even the title, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, um, and in French even more so than in English, mm -hmm. the the on fire can be a modifier for portrait or the lady. Right. And right. throughout the film, we see both of those things be on be fire. On fire yeah. um, but then there's also like a metaphorical fire mm -hmm. and, you know, that is brought to both of those things. And so I and, like, and rage and, and, yeah, yeah, I like that, that the title is, is extremely vague in that point. I mean, like on the movie poster, of course, the woman's it, dress skirt is on fire. Yeah. So, but you don't know so, if that's a painting or not. Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I thought that, um, you know, that dynamic of is the portrait on fire? Is the lady on fire? And yeah. actually, as we find out, it's both oh, at various yeah. points and in various ways. And yeah, it's, it's really neat. And I liked the wordplay of that a lot. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So 
What would you give this film if you had to rate it? Mm, oh, this is clearly a five. Five yeah. out of five. I mean, like, I'm that's you. easy, easy. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, I mean, I think it was a masterpiece technically. I think it was a masterpiece in storytelling. I think I've never seen anything quite like it. Mm -hmm. And I've never, I've certainly never seen a film that was so centered on women in such a kind of freeing, empowering way. And so I just, yeah, I... That was five out of five for me. Yep, I'd you, also give it a five out of five. <laughs> there, no question about it. That was every everything that you mentioned, everything that we talked about. I can't think of a flaw in the whole movie. I mean, just just the acting alone was some of just the greatest acting I've seen in a long time. It, I yeah, I have no faults with it, and I think it's so new and having this many women being the production side of things mm -hmm. is so cool. It's yeah. so interesting to see something that I just, I haven't seen a lot of things like this yeah. before. Yeah. Well, we're going to see Emma this Friday yes. and I've heard great similar things about this version of Emma. So oh, good. we're going to have to see if, how, how Emma compares to Portrait of a Lady on Fire too. I yes. think that'll be fun. Yeah. That'll be a quite different feeling behind it, I'm sure, yeah. because I know that one's a comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah, hopefully a little lighter, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you, Phoebe. And thank you guys for watching.